Well hello there guys, YouTubers, modelers. This is the second part of the video on the few of the Svetster, well the excellent value, uh, Svetster budget kits. Well I'll call them budget kits because it's like the lower end of the range. Um, some small military figures. Um, the smaller scales basically. Um, this particular kit, I think I got it for less than £7. I mean you can probably get it cheaper elsewhere online but I actually bought it from... Uh, what are they called? Real shops. Um, this is the Svetster, the model number is 3627. And um, this is the German infantry set, Eastern Front, winter 1941-1942. Uh, the scale is 135th scale. So, upon completion, these uh, builds could easily be added to other deer armors, other. Uh, especially for um, fans of AFV and other similar devices. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the front, obviously. He says, no kidding. The front illustration, well in this case it's not really strictly an illustration, it's a digital depiction or digital painting. Um, I'm pretty good it is too. It's a good painting reference as well. You know, it's pretty clear. It's very good indeed, um, even though personally I prefer the old school style of illustrations, you know, the hand painted box covers, but you know, different eras, different methods. Um, so that's the, the cover of the box, like I say, excellent uh, clear depiction there. Um, on the side of the box we've also got other other sets in this same series, <clears throat> the same historical period, uh, the Soviet, Soviet and German soldiers, um, Second World War era. Um, on the side, very simple, just a small photograph, crop from the front image and a few side graphics um, with the scale of the kits and it's also repeated on the other side. Uh, that side, that's What's useful here is you've got the size of the actual figures. Uh, it's not actually that size when they're made, it'd be pretty pointless really. Uh, but it's giving you the height of the finished figure, which is five centimeters. Um, sorry, you can't see that there. Five centimeters there. Uh, <clears throat> let's have a look inside the box. Oh no, hold up one second. We've not looked at the reverse because on the reverse, is a really excellent um, painting guide of the figures. Um, these are the completed figures, obviously, um, and you can tell they're the actual models. You can just tell they are, uh, and they're very nicely painted as well. So that's another excellent reference for a painting guide uh, with the almost the winter tunics. And the helmets in this kit actually do come with like a winter camouflage band and the camouflage over the actual helmets within the kit, which you'll see shortly, hopefully. Um, you've basically got four figures. There are not eight figures like shown here. That's just showing you the different position, forward and reverse of uh, each figure. Right, let's have a quick <coughs> delve in there, have a look. <coughs> We've got, plonk the box there. You've basically got Looks like two sprues. Oh, I know you have because I already opened it. <laughs> um, two sets of sprue there and two pieces of paper. One of those pieces of paper, not very interesting at all. It's just one of those product guarantees, so we're not interested in that. Um, and here is the one we are interested in. This is the little instruction leaflet. Very simple, but uh, it's printed out on one sheet. And it's very clear as well. Very clear diagrams. Very incisive lines on the diagram, so you'll be able to see exactly what goes where. The numbers might be a bit f small for some people, but on the whole they're pretty good. Um, <clears throat> you've basically got four stages of build. Well, figure one, two, three. And then four on the reverse here. 
Below that you've got the painting instructions. Uh, the painting instructions are not in colour unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. But then again, you know, it's at this price you can't really complain. Um, you've got a list of the colours there. And also there's a hell of a lot of numbers surrounding these figures that don't exactly all correspond with the, uh, the paint guide. With the paint guide you've only got about nine, nine paints on there or something. Um, but anyway, you'll find a way through that, I'm sure, to uh, get the right paint scheme. Uh, <coughs> again, on the side, that's the that's the sprue diagram there. So you've basically got two sets on one sprue, the A sprue. So it's two sets on the A sprue, and then two little sets of equipment and ciliaries on the B sprue, just there. So let's have a look at these. I'm going to show you the, f the smaller one first because I've actually started painting these already on the sprue. But I'll show you the smaller one to give you some idea of the detail. Uh, there's some rifles and things there. Uh, and the detail is pretty damn good for models of this price, I think. It's a pity Airfix aren't diversifying more with their range. That's the one thing that frustrates you know, much like, like Airfix kits and their quality has improved, but I just wish they, you know, make a greater range. Sorry, Airfix. Um, we all love you, really. Well, some of us do. Uh, so they can see the equipment there on this. This is the B sprue. There's no number on there. That's just the company num company name on the side there. There's Vegeta company name. Um, so we've got the shovels and ammunition boxes and what have you on there. But uh, looks like it's pretty good quality plastic. Fairly, you know, fairly solid. And like I say, the de I think the detailing is excellent. Look for I look forward to really finishing these off. It's going to take me probably a while because I've got so many other things to be doing at the moment. Unfortunately, not just modelling. Um, this is the main sprue with the main figures. So... Um, as I've started painting and priming them and faffing about with them, you won't see the original colour, grey. But the original colour is only the same as the sprue anyway. Um, if you can see there, I like the way the leg positions are quite dramatic. So you've got lots of positions for these soldiers on the arms. And I guess also more advanced modellers can also change the positions of the arms. You know, you can move them up and down or pin them. You pin them and change them or cut them and change them yet again. Um, yeah. Actually, on the reverse, you probably see which some aren't painted. There's capes and things. So there we have it there. Um, the only gripe that I've read about these kits, uh, this particular model, is... Um, I think I read it on some forum somewhere. It could have been on, on, a, on a video, but I think it's a forum anyway. It's the <clears throat> only gripe they had was on the belt buckle here. You can just see that. They're a bit too, they're rather prominent. They, 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 they raise up too, too high. Whereas apparently in real life, they would have been a lot flatter. Than that, they would have just been more, you know, probably in a buckle that was flat across the belt. I mean, it's a very, it's a minor, it's a minor gripe, but I guess to some people, or he obviously noticed it, or she obviously noticed it, and uh, well, it would have probably, probably been a he. Anyway, so what you can do is just sort of file those down a bit, you know, just take it off, you know, if you feel it's too high, like there, I've done there, and then just paint over it. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those little things. Do it gently and be careful you don't file off <laughs> the rest of the detail on the, the model. But uh, but apart from that, to me they look, you know, excellent. And I look forward to uh, gluing these together and getting on with the painting. Oh, incidentally, there's no, there's no flash as far as I can tell on it either. I think there was a very, the odd, tiny, tiny little amount on which I scraped off one or two pieces. Um, the flash was basically non-existent. Um, obviously, when you cut them off the sprues, you're going to have to sort of 
file them down a bit, sand them down a bit there, but you know we have to do that anyway, regardless of what we what level the kit is. You know, so well that's that concludes this video. Otherwise, I'll do my usual and run out of a memory file or something daft. Um, but yeah, I look forward, I really look forward to getting these to a reasonable standard of finish. Uh, I say reasonable because, uh, you know, I'm not an experienced figure painter at all, really. Um, but I really want to get my teeth into that and uh, seeing what I can achieve with just, you know, a basic figure kit. Um, there is, well, there's one more thing as a stand for one figure. I don't know why there's only one stand there with a footprint in it. But I guess that's just for one particular pose for one of the models. Uh, doesn't quite say where on there. Maybe it's for this guy. Maybe that's for that soldier there. So that concludes this video yet again. And um, I look forward to seeing you or hearing from you or waffling on on the next video. But as I've got quite a lot of kits on the go now, uh, especially figures, which it's gonna, it's gonna require a lot of work, a lot of painting, and uh, we're not even halfway there yet, not even a quarter way started. And I've got a lot of the other kits I've started, so um, it could be a little while before the next video now. But uh, that's okay. So happy modeling to everyone out there, all you guys still at it, and uh, look after yourselves, and um, see you all on the next video. That concludes this video, and bye for now.